Bridgewater, New Jersey, Stephen K. Bannon, the embattled chief strategist who helped President Trump win the 2016 election by embracing their shared nationalist impulses, departed the White House on Friday after a turbulent tenure shaping the fiery populism of the president's first seven months in office. Mr. Bannon's exit, the latest in a string of high-profile West Wing shakeups, came as Mr. Trump is under fire for saying that both sides were to blame for last week's deadly violence in Charlottesville, Virginia. Critics accused the president of channeling Mr. Bannon when he equated white supremacists and neo-Nazis with the left-wing protesters who opposed them. White House Chief of Staff John Kelly and Steve Bannon have mutually agreed today would be Steve's last day, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, the White House press secretary, said in a statement. We are grateful for his service and wish him the best. Mr. Bannon's outsized influence on the president captured in a February cover of Time magazine with the headline The Great Manipulator, was reflected in the response to his departure. Conservatives grouse that they lost a key advocate inside the White House and worried aloud that Mr. Trump would shift left, while cheers erupted on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange when headlines about Mr. Bannon's ouster appeared. Both the Standard Poor's 500 stock index and the Dow Jones Industrial Average immediately rose, though they ended the day slightly down. His removal is a victory for Mr. Kelly, a retired Marine Corps general whose mission is to impose discipline on White House personnel. A caustic presence in a chaotic West Wing, Mr. Bannon frequently clashed with other aides as they fought over trade, the war in Afghanistan, taxes immigration and the role of government. In an interview this week with the American Prospect, Mr. Bannon mocked his colleagues, including Gary D. Cohn, one of the president's chief economic advisors, saying they were wetting themselves out of a fear of radically changing trade policy. Mr. Trump had recently grown weary of Mr. Bannon, complaining to other advisors that he believed his chief strategist had been leaking information to reporters and was taking too much credit for the president's successes. The situation had become untenable long before Friday, according to advisors close to Mr. Trump who had been urging the president to remove Mr. Bannon in turn, people close to Mr. Bannon also were urging him to step down. By Friday night, Mr. Bannon was already back at the Fairright Breitbart News chairing an editorial meeting at the organization he helped run before joining Mr. Trump's campaign and where he can continue to advance his agenda. Mr. Bannon can still wield influence from outside the West Wing. He believes he can use his perch at Breitbart, which has given a platform to the so-called alt-right, a loose collection of activists, some of whom espouse openly racist and anti-Semitic views to publicly pressure the president. And he may still play an insider's role as a confidant for the president, offering advice and counsel, much like other former advisors who still frequently consult with Mr. Trump. Mr. Bannon had formed a philosophical alliance with Mr. Trump, and they shared an unlikely chemistry. Mr. Bannon has indicated to people that he does not intend to harm Mr. Trump and he has promised to be somewhat reserved about other administration officials including Jared Kushner, Mr. Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor, and his wife, Ivanka Trump, the president's daughter. In many ways I think I can be more effective fighting from the outside for the agenda President Trump ran on. And anyone who stands in our way, we will go to war with, Mr. Bannon said on Friday. But his former colleagues in the West Wing are uncertain how long that will last. Joel Polak, a Breitbart executive, tweeted after Mr. Bannon's departure was made public a single word with a hashtag war. Mr. Bannon called reporters to suggest Mr. Polak had gone too far, but he also acknowledged his own disappointment at departing the White House. He told the Weekly Standard the Trump presidency that we fought for, and won, is over. We still have a huge movement, and we will make something of this Trump presidency. But that presidency is over. It'll be something else. And there'll be all kinds of fights, and there'll be good days and bad days, but that presidency is over. Still, allies of the president predicted that Mr. Bannon's ouster would help Mr. Trump's agenda. I think it's going to be good for both Steve and for the president, said Christopher Ruddy, the chief executive of Newsmax Media who has known the president for years. The president has a major hurdle in the fall, I think, in getting legislation passed, Mr. Ruddy said. 
he cited several lawmakers who had told the White House that they had a real problem with Steve because of Breitbart, and Breitbart's been a thorn in the side foe.